The score by quarters tally through three games for Wake Forest obviously will line up well, given an unbeaten start and a combined advantage of 131-27. But the 87-7 margin in the first half, given that Appalachian State has struggled getting off the ground in two of its three games, means the opening minutes of Saturday's 3.30 game at Kid Brewer Stadium will be crucial. We've got to come out right off the bat against Wake Forest if we're going to have a chance to play well in this game, App State coach Scott Satterfield said. You can't wait until the second half, there's no question about that. That's been a point of emphasis, and just getting ready for this game is we've got to come out ready to go. We were sleeping in the first half of last week's game, and you can't do that against a good football team like Wake Forest. The Mountaineers trail Georgia 21-0 at halftime of its opener, losing 31-10. The halftime deficit was 10-7 last week before a 2013 win at Texas State. In between, App State rolled to a 45-0 halftime lead against football championship subdivision program Savannah State in a rout. Given the difference in competition level, that explosion proves the Mountaineers are at least capable of good starts. You've got to find ways to win the play and win the game, and our guys have been able to do that over the years many, many times. We've got to continue to do that, Satterfield said. On the other side, Wake Forest will try to get off to another fast start. The Deacons have held first half leads of 37 0, 21 7, and 29 0. Another outburst to begin this game could help subdue what promises to be a raucous crowd. If you come into the game not ready to play, they can pounce on you, and the crowd can start going crazy, and they can feed off of that, Wake Forest senior quarterback John Wolford said. But I think so far, the first three games we've done that. For us to continue to get better, we have to come out every game from the first kickoff ready to play. Both teams are focused on the start of the game because of how much respect each has for the other's rushing game and ability to cut chunks of time off of the clock. Wake Forest, at one point early in coach Dave Clawson's tenure starved for any consistency in the rushing attack, has averaged 230.3 yards per game on the ground. App State has averaged 175.3 rushing yards in its spread option attack. They'll get in that pistol or get in that zone red, and they'll have a motion guy and you have to defend all three phases, Clawson said. The back, Jalen Moore, was the player of the league in the Sun Belt a year ago. The offensive line is extremely well coached, use really tight splits, and they don't give up penetration. Neither of these teams has turned the ball over frequently, both able to point to four-year starters at quarterback, Taylor Lamb for App State and Wolford for the Deacons. The Mountaineers have committed two turnovers, one of those coming late in the blowout of Savannah State. Wake Forest's only turnover of the season also came late in a game against an FCS school, a fourth-quarter interception thrown against Presbyterian. If the trend continues and neither offense gifts the opposition with a short field, the difference will come from each team's playmakers, of which there are plenty on both sides. I think they're a well-coached football team and Coach Clawson has done a great job there revitalizing the program and getting them turned back in the right direction, Satterfield said. Speaking from experience, Clawson has an idea of what to expect Saturday from the Mountaineers. Just being at Bowling Green in the MAC, any time you can bring a Power 5 team in or a name team in, it gives those kids some extra juice, and we're going to get their best. Everything that we've seen on film from them, we know we're going to get their very best, Clawson said.